Thank you for joining me. My name is Dr. Sigal Jacobson. I'm a dentist, lecturer, and the inventor of the Uveneer template system for composites. My passion is conservative dentistry, especially uh, conservative cosmetic dentistry. Today, I will speak about how to create beautiful composite restoration in the aesthetic area in a fast and efficient and a predictable way using the Uveneer system. And you will see cases, some tips and tricks, and other applications for the Uveneer kit beside uh, the veneers. The question is why, we, why I prefer in many cases to do composite veneers. And if we compare composite veneers to porcelain veneers, you will see that composite are more um, preser preservative. You can uh, preserve healthy tooth structure. It's minimally invasive. Uh, in this way, you leave the patient future options uh, if they would like to uh, do porcelain veneer later down the track they can always transform uh, the composite veneers to porcelain veneers. And this is what I explain my patients, that let's start with composites, and especially for young patients. And later on, if you want to, you can uh, change it. So in a way, we are uh, preserving healthy tooth structure. Another thing, you can control the, the color in the chair. So that means you don't have to send the patient to the lab. It saves you time. Uh, you can do even half a tooth if you want to, or one tooth. You don't have to do the set of the teeth. And that's because the composite reflects the light very close to enamel. Uh, in this way, we don't have to do like the porcelain six or ten veneers. Um, so the color is very easy to control. It's also very easy to fix. Uh, you can do it directly directly in the chair. You don't have to send them to the lab. Uh, it's quite a disaster when uh, your porcelain veneer will chip or delaminate. Whereas with composite veneers, usually uh, they will not come off. They will chip or stain, and it's very easy to fix. And all, although the new modern uh, composites, the, uh, they, they stain less, and they cheap less because they are stronger. The nanotechnology improved a lot, um, so you can rely on that a little bit more than in the past. It's also affordable to the patients. Having said that, uh, those, this affordability will increase your profitability, and the reason is you will have a higher case acceptance uh, almost 90% of my patients, if I will do a direct chair side mock-up, just to show them without etching and bonding how the restoration will look when we finish, I can, I can re reassure you that the patients will uh, be more reluctant to agree rather than when you have to do 10 composite veneer, which will cost them a fortune. Uh, so the acceptance rate with composite, we find it very high which will increase your profit. Now, look at these beautiful cases. Uh, they are all done with composites. I can tell you today that there is almost no aesthetic problem that we cannot fix with composites. So the question is why so many dentists uh, are a little bit uh, shy away uh, they stay away from giving their patient the option of composite veneers. And the reason is uh, that creating composite veneers requires some artistic skills. Uh, we, can be a very, we can be very good dentists, uh, but not all of us are artists. And we definitely, in a dental school, were not highly trained like our dental technicians. Uh, to create the tooth anatomy, you know, the line angles, uh, the lobes, the perichomata, uh, this takes also a lot of time. It's time consuming. I mean, you can get it if, if you spend maybe a long time. Uh, and because it's a time consuming thing, we, a lot of us, rather do other procedures uh, in this time, which will be more profitable uh, also for the clinic. 
Many dentists also believe that composite solution is a temporary one. Uh, they believe that they will chip, they will stain, and they kind of want to give their patients uh, the best thing and they will offer them only the porcelain option. Uh, and then they will send a lot of patients with cosmetic problems home because uh, they will refuse to do the porcelain option. It's not a temporary solution, guys. I've done composite veneers for over 15 years now. Many of uh, my veneers are still there with a very high satisfaction rate from the patients. And yes, there are some surface changes in the future. It might, it might change the color, but nothing very dramatic. Our natural teeth also change color. As long as you explain the patient that they may be... Uh, future maintain, maintenance visits for the composites uh, and the patients understand, really understand that you are safe and with the modern composites uh, the staining is much less as I say, uh, the chipping is much less so you have to worry about this less and less and the technology is only improving. Now Regarding the time-consuming and artistic ability, uh, it was my problem as well. It took me too much time to create direct veneers. It was very artistically challenging for me. Uh, I knew that composite uh, can be a very good solution for a lot of my patients, uh, and I needed to find uh, something that will make it quicker, more predictable. I looked in the market for any other solutions. I couldn't find them. So I decided to create it myself by uh, creating a template system that will uh, create the shape and the shine uh, for my veneers. And this uh, called the U-Veneer, uh, I will present it to you now. It was released in 2014. Uh, it is used by thousands of dental clinics very successfully uh, in the world. And let's talk about how it works and what is the Uveneer. So the Uveneer is a template system. It is the only template system existing now in the world for anterior veneers. It is premolar to premolar, very strong, durable material. We embedded fiberglass in this. It's an autoclavable material. And I'm going to show you how it works. So that's the kit. It has two rows of upper and lower teeth. Uh, first, you line the carries, of course, and you rough the surface of the tooth. You do one tooth at a time and insert the matrix to separate the teeth. didn't choose the right shade in case you didn't you press too hard or there is any issue you just rough the surface and you apply second layer of composites in between those second layer of when you want to do let's say you want to do layering technique you want to do dent in enamel and I'm going to show you how to do it 
in between the layers, you can apply prime or bond or studies shows that you don't even have to add anything, uh, just composite on composites. Before that, the kit. The kit has two sizes. It has a large size and it has medium size. Each size has a premolar to premolar, maxillary teeth and mandible teeth. You have it in large and in a medium universal size, which will fit to more than 90% of our patients. Uh, it is done according to the smile design rules. Each template is reusable. You can autoclave it out to, out, up to 500 times even uh, because it's a fiberglass based. It will not break, it will not stain as long as after the use you wipe it with alcohol wipes and then you can put it in the autoclave. Uh, in, inside the template uh, there is a Teflon like surface. It does not stick to composites. So you can reassure, I can reassure you it's very easy to remove it. Uh, and of course, there is the midline on the outside uh, of the template, not on the inside. Uh, and if you lose one, you can order uh, one template from your dealer. And I, I wanted those things in my souvenir. When I created them as a dentist, it was important for me that I can reuse it, that they will be strong. And if I lose one, I don't have to order the whole kit. The Uvenir was done according to the smile design rules and proportion, the golden proportions. And what is the smile design rules and protocols? It's like uh, anything in aesthetics, there are rules. Uh, with teeth, for example, the central should be anything, the central incisors has to be anything between 10 millimeter to 12 millimeter. This is the ideal sizes. Most of our patients will be between 10 millimeter to 12 millimeters, and the Uvenir have uh, the large one is 12, and the small one is 10.2 millimeter, 80% width to length. Uh, and there is some other uh, protocol rules that were embedded into the system. And as I said, if you need to change anything, it's easy. You just take your bear and, and finish it uh, as you like. What is the benefit to the dentists? It is one-time investment. You buy it one time and you can use, use them for years. And you can use any composite you have in your drawer. Uh, it's not uh, one composite for the for the kit. Uh, any brands will work with that. Of course, some will be less shiny, some will be more shiny. It depends on the particle size and arrangement of the composites. Uh, you will get a very strong restoration uh, than if you do it with your hand. And the reason is when we use the uvenil and we cure through the template, we actually block the oxygen during the process, which will give us a very shiny surface. Same like when you put cellulose strip on a composite, you'll get this shine. And also they will stain and will wear less. As well as when we press on the template, <clears throat> sorry, we actually break the bubbles as well because of the pressure and then we cure it while we press. This will save you also about 50% of the time. Yes, at the beginning there is a small learning curve, but it's very easy to overcome them with time. Second, third cases, you will, uh, you will do it faster and faster. Uh, and there is a high return on investment because you buy the kit and then one or two case that you do, cases that you do, you will pay for the kit. And this is the oxygen inhibition layer studies that shows that if you block the oxygen uh, air in the air during the curing process, your surface texture will be much stronger, much more shiny, will stain less and will wear less. And we actually seen it with the uvenia cases. They come back after one year and it's still shiny and hardly any surface changes and wear or any uh, discolorations. Let's talk about the applications of the kit. Uh, it's not only for direct veneers. 
you can use them to do mock-ups. Um, I'm a big believer in mock-up. Uh, this is, for me, is a predictable dentistry. It's a great tool to motivate the patient to do the work. Uh, it's a great selling tool, and for me as a dentist, it's a good way to choose the shade, the color of the composite that I want to do. So I do a lot of mock-ups, and when I do mock-ups with you, veneer, uh, the color, the shade that I will get with my mock-ups with the you, veneer, will be more precise. Um, you can do also uh, class 4, class 5, diastema closure. You can even fix Portland fractures if you have the porcelain repair kit. Uh, you can even repair dentures. So if a denture from your patient breaks and you have the universal bond, that the universal bond is generation seven, and they have a monomer that can bond composite to denture, to acrylic. So with the uvenil, you can fix it. You don't have to send it to the lab. It, guys, it worth to try to do the fixing of the denture with the composite. You can always send it to the lab later if it didn't work. I promise you, we did a lot of cases, and there are studies who show that the bonding of composite to acrylic is very strong. Another application you can use the UV Neal kit is to create individual composite shade guides. Unfortunately, a lot of us, we still select the shade of the composite of the final restorations with Vita Shade Guide, which meant to be for porcelain. It's completely different material than composite. If you want to be more predictable with your shade selection, you can create your own individual shade guide with your own composites. The way you do it, you apply the composite into the template, cure it, remove it, and create individual shade guide or those individual veneers you can even say them and when the patient come you can just select the right shade with those veneer that you made I'm going to show you a case of two central incisors that was done in 25 minutes with you veneer First, I always do a mock-up. I sit the patient and we choose the right shade. I try many brands until I find the exact shade that will match. Minimally prep, apply the separation between the teeth and just do one tooth at a time. So these were two teeth uh, done in 25 minutes with the uvenir. It was one layer. There was no two shades there. Um, and the reason I applied the flowable composite into the template was to get more gloss, more shine from the high fill composite. So I applied the packable composite onto the tooth and the high fill flowable on the template and combined them together. In this way, I got the strength from the packable composite and the gloss and the final finish from the high fill flowable. A lot of brands today, they do the high fill flow. Uh, you have the GC, Genial Universal Flow, you have the Voco, you have 3M. 
uh, you can use Bisco, all of those brands, they use the high fill flow, uh, and which you can use into the template. How do I prepare a tooth for composite veneer? How do I, uh, um, what is the difference between preparing a tooth for composite and porcelain? With composite veneers, you have minimal to no reduction. Composite do not need uh, a lot of thickness. They can be very thin, uh, but you always rough with a burr. You will always prepare the tooth by roughing it with a burr uh, to increase the retention. Don't remove the incisal part. Composite need the strength of the tooth underneath. If you will remove the incisal part, you will risk uh, chipping in future. In these cases, please make sure that, like class four, so in those cases that you do have uh, incisal part that is not supported by the tooth, please make sure that there is no premature contact when the patient moves the jaw in all directions, in all movements. Uh, also, with the uveneer, especially, if there is any high contoured area on the tooth, just remove them so it will be more flat, so the uveneer will, will sit passively. Nothing will stop it from sitting on the tooth uh, when you press it. Let's look at this case. This case, we did two composite veneers on two centrals. Very easy case. As you see, there is what called reverse, reversed smile, means that the curve of the teeth is not following the lower teeth, the lower lip, sorry. They do not follow the lower lip, they are reversed. And this makes the patient, when she talks, uh, not to show her teeth so much. She wanted to be able to show the teeth when she is in a relaxed position. So what do we do? Basically, it's a very easy case because we, the teeth are intruded, so we don't really need to remove too much of the tooth, of the, both teeth. Uh, you measure which you veneer, is it the medium or the large? In each template, they will say M, which is medium, or L, which is large, and then there will be the number of the tooth, if it's upper right one or upper left one. So you will uh, measure which, which direction you want to go, is it the medium or the large. And as I said, you, even if the teeth are intruded and there is no need to remove the, the tooth, you're still going to rough it with a diamond burr to increase retention. You can also uh, use sandblast to increase retention. And you will etch the tooth and always etch the tooth. As I said before, studies show that generation 7, uh, the universal bonding, and any other bonding on enamel, we will need to etch in order to increase retention. The etching is for 15 seconds. I like to use the ultra etch by ultra dent because it has self-limiting. What does it mean? Even if I leave it for two minutes in the tooth, it will stop etching, unlike the other um, etching um, materials in the market, that if we will leave them, they will continue etching and they create sensitivity, especially on denting areas, it's more important. So the ultra etch will stop etching after 1.9 uh, nanometer uh, depth and uh, it's also very thick so you can control it when you suck suck it and you can use them when you do spot etch it just stays in the area uh, good for fissure sealing or when you do orthodontic brackets so I will use the ultra edge for 15 seconds and then you will apply the bonding and again with the bonding is very important that you will use this, the, you will read the instructions, you will um, use the bonding as, exactly as the manufacturer instructions, uh, you will also have to wait, wait for the evaporation, every uh, bonding today has the denting uh, bonding capabilities which they in, in immerse uh, ethanol or acetone or water in those bonding agents, 
and it's very important for us to wait about 10 to 15 seconds even to the evaporation before we cure. Uh, so I will uh, do sometimes even two layers and then I'll, I'll put some uh, air and dry it. You need to see a glossy surface before you cure. You apply composite on the tooth and then you press the U veneer. When you press the U veneer, you will get excess of material. This is the time to remove the majority of the excess of the material and then you cure. As you can see, we used a Teflon tapes to separate the teeth. Uh, they're very, they're highly recommended. You can buy them in any hardware shop. This is the regular um, plumbing tape which you use for your plumbing uh, in your house. After you remove the template, you'll still have some excess. Very easy to remove them. Uh, you will use any discs that you have, any polishing disc for the incisal area. You can use the goat hair brush with a diamond polishing paste just for the final. Do not touch the gloss. You will have a glossy area. This is just to uh, give it a little bit more finish, which in many cases you don't really even need to do that. And that is the final restoration. Only two, only two composite veneers on the two central incisors. Before and after. And as you can see now, she shows more of her teeth uh, in a relaxed position. For the interproximal separation, you can use, as I said, the Teflon or the cellulose strips. And for finishing, I would like to use the extra fine diamond burrs for the periphery in the contact point, interproximal saw, and then the polishing strips and the incisal and palatal area. We can use the Jiffy Composite Finishing Kit by Ultradent or any other polishing disc you have at your clinic. How to create the palatal side? Well, for small palatal areas that are missing, you can use your finger. I like to use the Teflon to separate my glove from the composite and just give, uh, with the index finger, just have some pressure from the palatal side and then build your composite. On a bigger uh, cases, when there is more of the palatal side missing, you can create a silicon stand. You will do it with doing a, a, a wax up on a model and then take your putty, apply it on the wax up, and then you just cut it with a scalpel and you can create the palatal side for the composite to lean on uh, and give you like a contra pressure to lean the composite and start your restoration from the back. A lot of bad dentists think that with you veneer you cannot do the layering technique. Now I want to show you how we do the layering technique with the U veneer. First we are measuring which again which template are we going to go ahead with. In this case it was the large. You apply the enamel translucent shade on the missing area. I use here the Vital Essence, uh, the Trans Gray by Ultradent. Then you apply the Dentin shade. Uh, with the Dentin shade, it is more opaque shade. Uh, you can create the halo effect by creating the mamelons with your instrument you're just dipping it and creating triangles so that the translucent layer at the back will reflect. So you have the translucent shade at the back and the dentin shade at the front. At this stage you will press the U veneer, you cure and you are ready for the third layer which is the enamel shade. You can use either flowable or packable enamel shade. You press onto the two layers that you created already and you cure and remove it. Now we're doing the second tooth curing. It was the lateral now and we are going to do the central. You can even do temporary crowns with your veneer. 
Again, create the tr translucent layer at the back on a silicone key. If you have a pro and then you do the same steps of dentin shade and the enamel shade on top. But if you get some missing areas, how are you going to fix them? So I will show you how to do that. You will apply after you cured, you will and you remove the template, you will apply composite on the missing area. And with your cellulose strip, you will pull them distally and then correct it with the with a disc. Look at the beautiful natural result you got with the three layers. You don't have to do uh, three layers today, the composite, they are very natural, they have chameleon effect. Uh, the companies want to make it more simple for us and they create composites that are looks beautiful even in one layer. And because the U veneer give you different thicknesses of composite in different areas of the template, sometimes with one layer, not sometimes, in many cases, with one layer you of composite, one shade, you can see a lot of shades because of the different thicknesses in different areas. And this is when we finish. And this is a, another case we did with two layers. It was dentin and enamel. You can also do a mock-up. As we discussed, the mock-up with Uvenir is very easy. All you do is the same steps without etching and bonding it. It's a great communication tool, shade selection tool, and a motivational tool. And I want to show you how to do them directly in the mouth. There's two ways you can do the mock-up, is it on a, on a model or directly in the mouth. Uh, this is a video of Dr. Newton Farr from Brazil that shows how to do uh, the mock-up without the etching and bonding, uh, in, indirectly in the tooth, and he will correct the right lateral uh, incisor with the U veneer and show the patient how it looks before he committed it. So it's a short tooth, you see it broken on the incisal area. First, you choose which template you're going to go ahead with. You measure. You apply the composite here. You use the Vital Essence by Ultradent. Apply it into the template because it's a mock up. In the mock up stage, we apply the composite into the template. Press and cure. You also from the palatal side and remove it. See how a thin shell is formed. Some polishing diamond paste and you can see before and after show the patient and you can even cement it later with a flowable composite if you want to. So this is an indirect way of creating a mock-up. You can also do it directly on either on the patient or on a model to show the patient how it looks like a wax up. Another thing we can do with the uvenir is when you have a missing tooth, when in cases of implants or extractions, when you need to wait for three months for healing of the soft tissue or the bone graft, I use a fiber splint, uh, you can use Rebond or any, any other brand, uh, you etch and bond the adjacent teeth, apply the fiber, I, I like to build the pontic with high fill flowable and press the uvenir, clean the excess and this is what you're going to get. So in those cases uh, you have to tell the patient to avoid biting directly on the tooth uh, you have to do some clearance at the back. Don't have a premature contact. Even if you have to make it a little bit shorter, it is much better than give them the removable partial denture, which patients don't really um, have a, 
the desire to wear and they really don't like the removable partial denture, this is an excellent solution. If you want to mask the dark tooth, it's a very challenging procedure uh, to do with composite, but it is possible. Uh, the three things that you need to remember is to cut a more tooth structure in order to create thickness of the composite that you will apply layer later. The thicker the composite, the more masking you're going to get. You have to use an opaque composite. And the last thing that I will suggest you is to build it in layers. First you apply the opaque composite, you cut back, you cure it, then you cut back, you apply the dentin layer, you cure it, you cut back, and then you will do the last layer. And in these three layers that you do and cure, you will mask more and more of the tooth, and it has to be cured in between. One layer of composite, even if it's thick, in many cases will not mask and will show the, the grayness of the tooth. You can also use the Uveneer as a stent for your gum contouring instead of creating stent with the lab. Uh, you can use the Uveneer. This is how you apply. You apply it, the Uveneer on the gums. You create bleeding spot with your probe. Remove the Uveneer and follow those bleeding spots that you created with the probe and cut with the laser. Of course, be aware of the biological width uh, and if it's violating any the, the bone uh, and the biological width, of course, send it to the periodontist uh, with the uveneer even to show them where you're gonna get. And the, the last thing that I wanna talk about is how to avoid failures of composites. Usually, failures of composite restorations in the anterior area will be chipping and discoloration. So, having a good isolation is a must. Uh, if you want to use a rubber dam, it is possible. Uh, I use a retractor, a good retractor, a cotton rolls, and if I have any intercervicular fluid or bleeding from the gums, uh, I have to stop it and I use the Viscostat by Ultradent before I do my restoration just to keep it very dry. The second important thing to avoid failure is the ideal composite selection, especially regarding the shade. It is very challenging to match the shade of a composite to the tooth. And one of the tips I want to give you is that you don't need to buy the 26 colors for one brand. Get the basic colors. 90% uh, of our patient will be the shade A. Uh, so have A1, A2, B1, one good bleach white, uh, one translucent color. And But buy them from different brands. So I have in my clinic around six to eight brands with A1, A2. Uh, and why I buy from different brands? Because A1 from 3M will not look like A1 from uh, Ultradent and will not look like A1 from Bisco. They will look different. And the reason is the particles uh, size and arrangement is different. So, and also our patients, some A1 have more translucent A1, some will have a more opaque A1. So, it's important to have those different brands and not to buy one brand with 26 colors that you're not going to use half of the colors. Another tip that I want to give you is always do a mock-up, shade selection mock-up. Don't start any work before you're sure which composite shade you are heading to uh, finish your work. The third thing is the proper bonding technique. Uh, every bonding has a different instructions. So please read the manufacturer instructions uh, to get the best of your, out of your bond. The fourth thing is when you finish your work and you don't want it to chip, you do the occlusion tuning in all direction. Patient has to move it in all direction and avoid premature contact. Even after one or two weeks, you see a small chip. Then the patient comes back to you you will fix it and you will find why did it happen and if needed you will remove from the opposing teeth a little bit just to avoid this premature contact 
And the last thing which is very important is to use a good curing light. Unfortunately, still uh, dentists are buying, uh, using very old LED lights or they buy uh, the cheap brands from the eBay. Uh, those will look like the curing, but they're not really curing. In my practice for the last 10, 10 years, I use the Valo. The Valo is an excellent light. Uh, it will cure any composite in the market, any bonding, because it has uh, a different uh, intensities. Uh, of frequencies of light uh, and it will cure every material it has three frequencies uh, and it has a very deep um, curing depth uh, you can even cure very deep uh, when you cement your crowns it will penetrate deep through the crown to your cement which is very important and, and also the valo for me is uh, the 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 most important tool because I use my light in almost everything in dentistry and light is something you need to invest. Uh, and this is the Rolls Royce of the lights today. Uh, the most used light in United States is the Velo. So having said that, I hope you enjoyed my lecture. Uh, if you have any questions, you can also email me on sigalicuvenir.com. We have a very good website on Uvenir, which you can use any video there on your website and you can create um, uh, advertisement. Uh, if you have the Uvenir in your area and say, I'm a Uvenir dentist, and you can add it to your uh, website as another thing that, uh, another procedure, that cosmetic procedure that you do to your patients. Uh, we have also a Facebook group with thousands of dentists there. Uh, the name of the group is Uvenil by Ultra Dent. Uh, thank you very much and I hope you enjoyed the lecture and we'll keep in touch. Thank you. Bye-bye.